Hello guys, welcome to Diablo the Primordial 2.0. This video is the continuation part after the last video, so if you have not watched it, then please watch it. The link is in the description. So without any further delay, let's start. But before we start, please like, subscribe, and press the bell icon so you don't miss the updates. After seeing Burna struggle, Irina and Rosaria immediately activated some magic. They were trying to dispel the magic buffs on the poison tiger and replace them with weakening magic. However, Irina and Rosari's magic was just erased by the students. Impossible. How is our magic being beaten by student-level magic? I could understand her surprise. She knew how the students were just a few days ago, and she could not have predicted that their magic would surpass hers in this amount of time. But that was reality. Not only Marsha, but the other magic students had learned to use the magic cards. Each student learned one spell. They were given one card each and it contained a type of magic that they were good at. Strategy wise, it was not going to be possible to have them learn more than that in just a matter of days. And so, I had them focus on just one spell that they were good with. And then, they were separated into groups, and then into smaller teams. For instance, there were 15 that learned healing magic. They were then separated into 5 teams of 3. There were 3 in the front, Julius, Karma, and Mondo, and then of course, the Poison Tiger. In other words, there was one team for every front guard, and there was one team left, which meant that there were three people who could move freely. Mondo was inferior to Julius and Karma in terms of combat ability, but he was quite brilliant when it came to defense. But I can't do that, he had hesitated at first, but he eventually accepted the important role after much persuading from the others. With six people taking turns healing them, the front guard would be able to fulfill their role just fine, unless they received significant damage. And of course, it wasn't just healing magic that was being used. Everyone had their own role. In fact, it was because of the few students who were in charge of interference magic that Irina's spells were being erased now. The enemy only had two people doing magic. They may have been much more capable, but that was with the old style of magic. This new type of magic was much faster when activating, and had short cooldown times. So even if the students were less capable, they could team up and overwhelm Irina quite easily. We can do this! Let's continue to protect them! Marsha shouted. As if encouraged by her, the students grew more determined. And like that, the battle of magic shifted to the students' favor. Or so we thought. What is this? This magic? As annoying as this is, I never would have predicted that such magic exists. Still, they're not the only ones with a trump card. Irina probably thought that this new magic was the result of the teacher's research. It seemed like she stopped focusing on it and switched gears. An incredibly calm person, as befit a researcher. And with that, she took out the trump card she had been hiding from her storage space. I will ask you one last time, will you really not join us? Master Irina, you are wrong. Trampling over the opinions of others and forcing your will onto them, is that not oppression? Isn't that the method that you hated the most? Marsha answered Irina's question. They were words of persuasion that were both a rejection and a plea. Irina's expression was full of pain for an instant, but she quickly regained her calm. Yes, I am a failure as both a teacher and researcher. I have a tendency of prioritizing my own emotions instead of what is right. I never had the right to teach you in the first place. But still, I cannot bring myself to forgive the great demon lord Rimaru. I know we could never beat him in an honest fight, but still, I want to hit him just once. We cannot allow our plan to leak. Irina seemed to have some deep hatred for me. We weren't acquaintances, so where did it come from? It was difficult. She might have tried to address her grievances to me directly, but it would not have seemed very realistic at all. She must have decided that there was no choice but to quietly make preparations and take control over the world from the shadows. They couldn't win in an honest fight, so they had to move from the back. I would have done the same, and it seemed like the right decision, that is, had it not involved the school. There were things in this world that you just could not do. Master, 
If you at least promised you wouldn't interfere. No. No attachments. I must be resolved. And then, with perfectly clear eyes directed at the students, she administered to herself the thing she was holding. It was a syringe filled with liquid. Irina, who was well versed in herbs, had formulated it herself. It seemed to be some kind of strengthening agent made of various concentrated medicines. If magic doesn't work, then I will just use this body to cut my way through. Now, those of you who are ready, let us fight. There was no hesitation in those eyes now. It was not the face of a teacher. It was the face of a warrior. And Rosari. Magnus, I will be of use to you as well. So saying, she injected herself with the medicine just as Irina had. Irina and Rosari's muscles expanded as a strength that exceeded human limits entered them. According to appraisal, their power was just as strong as Berna and Clad who had greater demons inside of them. It was an insane increase in power. On the other hand, I also just noticed that Magnus had not called a demon at all. He was fighting the three defenders with his own ability. Julius and the others had planned to bear all of the attacks without concern towards anything else, until the poison tiger had taken out at least one knight. And so it was lucky for them that Magnus had not been going all out. But now, but now that Irina and Rosari had joined, the sense of balance in the fight had crumbled. If Miss Irina joins, we will fight her. Brown and two other combatant teachers shouted as they joined the fight. I would have liked it if the students had handled everything, but I guess it couldn't be helped. If you compared Irina and Rosari, you would see that Irina was overwhelmingly stronger. So even with four A-rank teachers against her, Irina was managing them quite well. Irina's fighting style was Magic Fighter. You directly converted magic energy into attack power and attacked with it. It was why she was able to fight weapon-wielding teachers with her fists. Very well. If you wish to protect the students, come and stop me. And that was how the battle between Brown's team and Irina began. While Irina was being attacked by the four teachers, Rosari was still free. The remaining students were no match for her now and the situation immediately became dangerous. It was Mondo who acted first. Whoa! With a shout, Mondo rammed into Rosari, just as she was about to disarm the magic team. This meant that Julius and Karma would have to deal with Magnus without him, but it was a good decision. Mondo could not defeat Rosari. However, he could buy them some time. I was looking forward to seeing what he would do in the rest of the fight. As for the fight between the Poison Tiger and Berna and Clad, it was at a stalemate. Damn it, blasted beast. Don't get so worked up, Berna. We will only be defeated if you do not keep your calm. You don't have to tell me that. A stalemate here meant that the students were doing very well. There was support from the magic team and directions from the beast people. They were functioning well as a group. The outcome of this battle would depend on the tide. If just one of the main fighters on the enemy side fell, then we would gain a huge advantage. But if the Poison Tiger was defeated, the students would lose for sure. It all depended on making the right decisions and the healing of the magic team. It was a heavy role for these students with little experience, but I could only pray that they would do their best until the end. And the last group, Julius and Karma versus Magnus. Magnus must be struggling with something still because his sword seemed slower when it came to a direct fight. Perhaps Magnus did not wish to hurt his friends. He had looked pained when Julius and Karma had tried to persuade him. Regardless of his true feelings, it was nearly time for the fight to end. The heart was a complicated thing, and it was difficult for people to truly understand each other. But if you still wish to do so, then there is no other way than to clash with your real feelings. It might cause you to break apart, but that cannot be helped. I thought such things as I continued to watch the fight. Rimuru's Elegant Escape Play, 22 The fight between the Poison Tiger and Berna continued. It was the same with Irina and the four combat teachers. Mondo is being beaten into a pulp by Rosari, but thanks to the capable healers, he was able to continue. And that's it! Thank you so much for watching, and if you guys have not watched my other videos, then please watch them. The links are in the description. Also. Be sure to check out the narrator's Twitch, which is also in the description. 
don't forget to like, subscribe, and press that bell icon so you don't miss any updates.